It seems common to begin the TED Talk with a question. So here's one for you. How many of you have used the F word last month? Show me your hands, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, last week. And that's even more. All right. Thank you. How about yesterday? Oh, okay. This is interesting. All right. Now you're ready. Talking about sex was considered taboo in the past. But now we live in a time where sex-related content penetrates almost every bit of our public discourse. There are many different ways to talk about sex. Some explicit, some not so. No matter what the content is, how we talk about sex is important. To talk about something, we first need to learn the words for it. Speaking of learning, sex education is crucial, but often it fails to cover the newly developed terms and slangs. Slang words are usually taken online, for instance, from free porn sites. However, when using these slang words, young people may not notice the sensitive issues behind them. For instance, um, in what context were these slang words originally used? What are their implications? Education is the best answer. Knowledge is the only filter between fantasy and reality. Knowledge that lays the foreground of conscious. Take Hong Kong for example. The official guideline for sex education is not updated since 1997. To make things worse, talking about sex remains a big taboo in many classrooms. Many teachers, sometimes even parents, share the same mindset that young people may be able to figure out it by themselves. The ignorance is one thing. The illusion of a self-fulfilling prophecy is another. There's an urgent need to work on how to talk about sex. Because if gender inequality could be seen in porno, it could be seen in our language too. As a part of that new approach, I have designed a series of pictures to try to illustrate sex-related slangs. The pictures will be printed in card forms um, as a part of a sex ed material for Hong Kong. My colleagues and I believe that these pictures may help raise the gender awareness. The content of the pictures is PG-friendly with no profanity, and they could be used in classrooms as an icebreaker to talk about sex. The pictures also come with concise references and notes, carefully prepared by professional social workers. Here are four examples. The picture focuses on the language. In Cantonese, cum shot or facial is ngan se, which is taken directly from the Japanese word Gensha. As you can see, it describes the male ejaculation of semen on one's face. Kamshot is a common feature in porn. From a gender perspective, Kamshot is performed almost entirely exclusive um, to male as the doer and female as the receiver. On the language aspect, when speaking of um, cum shot, the connotations are almost entirely antagonistic. Cum shot in basketball means a direct slam dunk in front of the opponent's defendant. In video games, 
Come shots could mean、uh, headshot in Cantonese, or shot in the penis in English. In reality, come shot to many girls is something uncomfortable. Not to mention the connotations of being treated like a porn actress. And by looking into the usage, we shall rethink the implications behind the saying. Squirting. In Cantonese, "xiu chui," or in Japanese, "shufuki."、Uh, squirting is a common feature in Japanese porn. It describes the female ejaculation of body fluids from vagina. Squirting is usually performed、um, or achieved with the help of certain toys. Or fingering. All squirtings in the videos that I have personally、um, examined as part of my research <laughs> is performed、um, with the help of、uh, male actors. <coughs> Notable、uh, male to- porn stars such as to-、uh, Ta- Torokata、um, celebrated. In the East Asian subculture, for their remarkable fingering techniques, the term "squirting" is especially requested for the teaching material. From the many true stories told by ER doctors, the myth of the golden fingers is responsible for numerous injuries and infections. On language in slang. Worth a squirt is a phrase used when you see a girl who you like to hump or to have sex with. By saying "worth a squirt," the speaker is directly hinting a sexual engagement to the girl, which is a considerable sexual harassment、uh, when addressed to a person. Now, when saying something makes someone feel uncomfortable or even disrespected, shall we not be careful? When saying it, speaking of harassment, upskirting is another notable example. It describes someone taking pictures up a girl's skirt without her permission. In Cantonese, upskirting is tao pa.、Um, in Hong Kong, the term. Upskirting is sometimes renamed as street photographing. In several WhatsApp and Telegram groups, large amount of street photographing, which are actually upskirting pictures, are shared. Now, without the consent of the person concerned, upskirting is absolutely indecent and illegal in many countries. On the language aspect, the change of the term from upskirting to street photographing sweetens the improper nature of the action. And by using such euphemistic terms, we are partially endorsing the action. Although euphemism in language, especially in addressing sex, is nothing new and sometimes unavoidable. It should not be used to cover up wrongdoings. Not all sex-related terms are explicit. In Cantonese, toilet or gongqi is a metaphorical term used to describe women who have several sex partners, a rough equivalent to slut. The gender bias and the act of slut shaming is unmistakably exhibited by calling someone a slut or a toilet. The hidden agenda here undermines gender equality and could be even more harmful when used online. 
Say you are a webmaster or moderator, reviewing thousands of posts and comments. Would you flag a word like toilet or a word like slut? Now, what if the reviewer is an android? This is what makes such unsuspicious terms so dangerous. The term toilet is exclusive to women, and is there an equivalent term for men? No, at least not in Cantonese. The irony here is the word fuck is actually more gender equal than everything mentioned before. And that we did learn at school. The challenge of our time is that the meanings in our language are invented, reinvented, assigned and shared at an unprecedented scale and speed. And often they are absent from our sex education. On a personal note, although I have been presenting you with all the illustrations and explanations, I assure you that I am no sex expert. I am just an illustrator. And as the creator of these pictures, I share with you a journey that led me to understanding the issue. Without starting the drawings, I wouldn't have known many of these terms. And the more I find out about the terms and their references, the more problematic they seem to me. To fix the problem, we need to find a collective solution. In a nutshell, if we have to talk sex right, we have to think sex right. Thinking instead of fantasizing, and talking instead of assuming. Talking about sex matters because life matters. The way we talk about sex underlines the way we construct social morality, and we all have a part to play. In the modern world, where gender equality is still far from fully being observed. How we talk about sex reflects how much we cherish and care about each other. You, me, them, everybody. Above all, this talk wishes to promote such awareness in every possible way. Talking is explaining. Talking about sex is the first step and shall not be the last, for it is needed now more than ever. Now, therefore, I invite you to talk to me, talk to your partner, to your family and friends, talk to someone who you trust. When in doubt, ask. When in trouble, seek help. I assure you that it is fine to talk about sex, especially when something bothers you. It bothered me. That's why I'm here. Thank you.